there's bigger issues, I think, with the Steelers and Tomlin that that will unfold depending on how the season plays out. They can still make the playoffs, and all this could be forgotten. But, boy, they better turn Let's it around. Hope Let's hope they don't. Let's hope they don't. You or it's, know it's, me. It, well, it's the I time of the year I want the best the seven in. I don't want to see them. They're not one of the best seven. I know. <laughs> I know. Well, then the conversation we're going to be having after the dust settles on the regular season is – would the Steelers dare initiate a change? Or is Tomlin the one who's going to say, I think it's time to move on? And the wild card is, will the commanders call? Will another team call and say, that, get you get the impression yeah. things maybe aren't where they need to right. be between right. you and Mike Tomlin. Yeah. What would it take to, to get him now, acknowledging that he's got one more year before he becomes a free agent? And I was telling somebody this recently. Coaches never – become free agents voluntarily they never say i got one year left on my contract i'm finishing it out and then i'm going to go wherever i want to go it never happens it's never strategic like we see with players and there's no salary cap yeah there's no franchise tag i feel like it's part of the it's like fear because they understand there's collusion and if you if you try to do that Maybe the other owners won't take kindly to it because they don't want to cross that bridge into full-blown coaching free agency. But that's what Tomlin could do. Yeah, He could say, "Yeah, I'm staying one more year, and then I'm going wherever I want to go. And I think that, that he would clearly have suitors if he does that. I don't even think it's close. You know, I, I, I know I, I brought up Washington a few weeks ago. That, to me, would be a place where if I'm Washington and you're looking to change the culture, right, Mike Tomlin would be at the top of my list right there. Hey, we need a guy that's come in, you know, to come in here. He's been there. He's done that. He knows what it takes to be successful, and he can get all the troops in line. Everybody, front office, locker room, training staff, weight room, all of it. So that's where I would get that. I could see the Steelers maybe being, hey, you know, o- over the Mike Tomlin era. I could also sit here and go, I could see Mike Tomlin being over the Steelers. I definitely can you know, we could talk about Mike Tomlin and all you want, but if you really want to unpack it, right, I think a lot of the problems with the Steelers, we know the offensive coordinator is an issue, and then we can blame that on Mike Tomlin. We can go through the laundry list, though, of other things where I go, that ain't Mike Tomlin's problem. Somebody else caused that problem for Mike Tomlin, and we put that on him. Quarterback situation, I don't. he ain't the GM. Okay, so there you go. They drafted a quarterback that it's after year two, and they're already talking about what are we going to do at quarterback. Okay, there you go. Najee Harris, first round running back. Oh, Tomlin's not making the pick. I mean, he's a he's a good second running back. Offensive line issues for what five years in a row now. Mike Tomlin ain't the GM. Aging front seven. Cam Hayward at the end. Miss on Devin Bush at middle linebacker. Right. So there ain't like it's T.J. Watt and Cam Hayward and Minka Fitzpatrick on defense after and uh, and uh, Alex Highsmith. I'll give him that. After that, it ain't nobody worth writing home about. So like for people to think that the Steelers should be oh if their offense was better and they had a better offensive coordinator they'd be sitting here at you know the, the twelve and two or something. They're insane. There is issues with this roster that Tomlin's coaching and culture have overcome that. So that's where I would go for people to all sit here and blame it on Mike Tomlin. You know, there's some things to blame on him, but there's a lot more to blame on others in that organization not named Mike Tomlin. And as I've said, as it relates to some of the former Steelers minority owners who go elsewhere and are not great owners because they're too involved, whether it's Jimmy Haslam in Cleveland, former Steelers owner, buys a team, David Tepper in Carolina, former Steelers owner, buys a team, I think they're they're involved because Art Rooney is kind of low key, very involved, making decisions. Doesn't doesn't attract the spotlight. Doesn't want the spotlight. And because the team is competitive more often than not, nobody ever says, "Why is the owner involved in this?" Plus, he's got a lifetime in football. It's family business. So we don't question it the same way that we do somebody who makes billions elsewhere and buys a team and all of a sudden thinks he's a football expert like David Tepper does. But I'll say this: Ed Bouchette, who covered the team for years said a couple of weeks ago that it was Rooney that ordered Tomlin to fire Mike Canada. Now, look, everybody thought Canada should go, but that's the kind of thing that, that has got to make Tomlin, in his 50s now, say, I don't want to be micromanaged like that. I'm too old for this crap. It's one thing to tell me after the 2011 season, when I want to bring Bruce Arians back, he's too close to Ben Roethlisberger, we're not offering him a contract, 
we're bringing in Todd Haley to run the offense, and that's our call, not yours. 2011, fine. 2024, not fine. And 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 I think that it just feels like it's moving toward a divorce. And to your point, it's more likely to be initiated by Tomlin than the Steelers, especially if somebody else is out there willing to give the Steelers something. It's not going to be the John Gruden, two first-round picks, two second-round picks, and $8 million in cash, but it's going to be something that would make the Steelers say, okay, fine. We can still say we never fire a coach. We've never fired a coach since Chuck Knoll, even though Chuck Knoll was kind of pushed. We've never fired a coach. They all leave on their own, and we keep them forever, and now's the time for Mike Tomlin to choose to leave. But we never fired him. We got a first-round pick or a second-round pick or whatever round pick in exchange for him. I could see it play out that way. And between him and Belichick, if I'm trading for one or the other, I know who I want right now. I want Tomlin. Yeah, I agree. Not Belichick yeah. right now. Right. I'm I- getting 20 years out of Tomlin. You, you, exactly. You're de- definitely getting an extended period of time. That's for sure. You know, Belichick, who, of course, you know, still, uh, you know, still does some good things. We know that we see what their defense is and he's a defensive coach. So we can't forget about that. But yeah, the end of the road, you know, as far as the age, how much longer he's going to go. Right. Some of his beliefs in roster building. I think those are the things that would scare me about Belichick as compared to to Mike Tomlin, like you're like you're saying. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.